Great. Great. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'll give just a second so folks can get in. All right, great. Well, again, good morning. My name is Alicia Cordes. I'm the Deed Communications Director. So glad to have you with us. Uh, as a reminder, to mitigate echoes, please keep your devices muted. Uh, you can type your questions in chat or use the raise hand feature. We'll take questions at the end. And if you have any technical difficulties, you can uh, contact Dawn. Her email is over there in the chat. So with that, we'll get started. Commissioner Verilek, over to you. All right, thanks very much, Alicia. Thanks everybody for joining us and greetings from the Capitol. Um, pleased to report that March was a great month all around for Minnesota employers and workers. We had strong job growth as well as strong labor force growth, showing that Minnesota's economy continues to move in a positive direction. If we look at the job growth specifically, we gained an estimated 11,000 jobs in the last month on a seasonally adjusted basis, and that equates to 0.4% growth. The private sector portion of that was up roughly 8,000 of the 11,000, which is a 0.3% increase. And for comparison, uh, at the U.S. level, employment increased by 0.2%, with the U.S. private sector up also 0.2. And again, Minnesota at 0.4 overall, 0.3 in the private sector. Uh, moving on to the labor force in Minnesota, we were pleased to see an increase of 3,018 people over the month. The labor force participation rate also ticked up uh, by one-tenth of a percent to 68.0. So right on the nose there, and the Minnesota unemployment rate stayed steady at 2.7%. Uh, over the month at the national level, the unemployment rate moved down one-tenth to 3.8%, and U.S. labor force participation increased two-tenths of a percent to 627 if we move next to over the year figures, Minnesota has gained a total of 47,508 jobs, which is growth of 1.6%. Uh, the private sector portion of that was 23,161 jobs, or 0.9%. And for comparison, U.S. employment grew 1.9% um, over the year with the private sector portion of 1.7%. And then if we look regionally, uh, we can share that job growth in the Rochester MSA continued its strong streak with over the year growth of 3,984 jobs or 3.3%. And the Minneapolis St. Paul Metropolitan Statistical Area had the biggest job growth by numbers with a growth of 22,337 jobs or 1.2% over the year. So, uh, summarizing all of that, as you can see, it was a very strong month for these economic measures in Minnesota with big job growth, strong labor force growth. And I would say we never want to overinterpret any individual month because some ups and downs are inevitable, but uh, always happy to see results like this one and to note that our longer term trends are strong as well. And so with that, I would hand things off to our labor market information director, Angelina Wynn, to go into the details. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share job growth details by super sector. So five super sectors in Minnesota gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis since the prior month. So the uh, going from uh, the biggest numeric uh, job gains. So leisure and hospitality gained 5,000 jobs, which is a 1.9% increase. Government gained 3,000 jobs, up 0.7%. Education and health services gained 2,800 jobs, up 0.5%. Construction gained 27,000 or 2,700 jobs, up 2.1%. And other services gained 500 jobs, up 0.4%. Mining and logging had no change over the month. And then we had five super sectors that lost jobs over the month. Um, but as you can see, the losses are smaller than the gains. So again, going from the biggest numerical um, loss. So financial activities lost 900 jobs, down 0.5%. Information lost 700 jobs, down 1.6%. Professional and business services lost 700 jobs, down 0.2%. Manufacturing lost 500 jobs, uh, also 0.2% decrease, 
And lastly, trade, transportation, and utilities lost 200 jobs, um, which is a 0% change for that uh, big super sector. So overall, Minnesota gained 11,000 jobs over the month uh, on a seasonally adjusted basis. Um, and as the commissioner said, that is a 0.4% growth. Um, for the prior month's report for February, um, we got revised estimates. So the seasonally adjusted job growth was revised up uh, 2,900 jobs. So, so final estimate says uh, Minnesota gained 3,000 jobs between January and February. And then next, I'm going to talk about our labor force. Um, over the month, our labor force size increased by more than 3,000 people. Um, so we, we are now at about 3 million, uh, almost 98,000 uh, people in our labor force as of March. Um, the number of employed increased by more than 3,000 workers, and the number of unemployed decreased by 11. So kind of so kind of flat. Um, so it's it's trending up for uh, this last several months, but still overall our labor force is about 34,000 people less or smaller than it was pre-pandemic uh, uh, in February 2020. Our labor force participation rate is still uh, holding steady. Um, it ticked up one tenth of percent to 68%, but it's been um, hovering around that uh, mark for a while. So that's, that's good news. Next slide, please. So over the year, Minnesota gained about 47,500 payroll jobs, which is a 1.6% growth. Um, for comparison, the U.S. over the year growth rate is 1.9%. Minnesota's private sector gained more than 23,000 jobs over the year, which is a 0.9% growth rate. U.S. private sector, for comparison, grew 1.7%. So the trends for over the year trends um, by super sector, um, they are still very similar to what we've been seeing recently. So six super sectors for Minnesota um, experience over the year positive growth and five super sectors lost jobs over the year. So the gainers, uh, government gained more than 24,000 jobs, up 5.8% from Minnesota, and outpacing the uh, U.S. rate of 3%. So growth was health healthy across all sectors uh, in government, especially in local government, which saw a 7% growth rate. Education and health services gained about 24,500 jobs, up 4.4%. And growth was especially strong in the healthcare and social assistance sector, um, despite declines in the educational services sector. And uh, for comparison, the U.S. grew at a similar rate of 4.3%. Leisure and hospitality gained almost 11,000 jobs over the year, uh, so up 4.4%. And all sectors grew um, under leisure and hospitality. Um, and nationally, the sector um, grew as well, even though at a, a slower pace uh, of 2.8%. Trade, transportation, and utilities uh, in Minnesota gained more than 8,000 jobs over the year, um, which is a 1.6% growth rate compared to the, na the national rate of 0.5%. Um, so retail, we still see strong growth in retail trade and wholesale trade. Um, while transportation, warehousing, and utilities declined by 0.9%. Um, other services is another super sector that gained jobs, um, gained more than 4,000 jobs over the year, which is a 3.7% growth rate, and outpacing the national rate of 1.9%, and all sectors posted uh, uh, positive growth under um, other services. And then lastly, mining and logging gained uh, 557 jobs, up 9.4%. Um, compared to the national rate of 1.8. And then we, the five super sectors that saw um, job loss over the year, um, the biggest numeric loss was professional and business services. They lost um, about a little under 14,000 jobs, down 3.6%, while the U.S. grew 0.7%. Um, so in for Minnesota, most sectors saw decline um, under professional and business services. And the biggest percentage decline was employment services. Um, they uh, declined more than 13%. Uh, 
Next is financial activities. Um, this super sector lost about 5,500 jobs over the year, down 2.9%, while the U.S. grew 0.8%, and losses were consistent in every uh, subsector under financial activities. Manufacturing lost more than 3,000 jobs, down 1%, while the U.S. grew a little bit, 0.2%. Uh, uh, and we saw loss in both the durable goods and non-durable goods manufacturing sectors. Information um, lost more than uh, 2,000 jobs, down 4.9%, and all subsectors saw decline um, here. Uh, the U.S. also experienced decline in information, uh, down 1.3%. And then lastly, construction in Minnesota lost 366 jobs over the year, down 0.3%. And losses were um, consistent across most of the sectors, except for heavy and civil engineering construction, which continued to grow at a very high pace, um, so almost 24% over the year. Uh, and then for comparison, the U.S. construction super sector grew 3.6%. Uh, All right, next slide, please. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about wages and inflation. So average hourly wages for all private sector workers increased 14 cents in Minnesota, so up to uh, almost $37 per hour for March. Um, and over the year, average hourly earnings increased uh, $1.70 um, from Minnesota, up 4.8%. And nationally, uh, wages also increased, so uh, it went up 3 Three cents over the month and rose 4.1 percent over the year. Um, so both Minnesota wage growth and U.S. wage growth um, were higher than uh, the inflation rate for March, um, which was 3.5 percent. And that is all I have. Commissioner, back to you. get the camera back on. Great. Um, thanks so much, Angelina. And with that, we would be happy to take any questions. I see Emma. Hi, good morning. And welcome, Emma. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to ask about um, the continued worker shortage. If you can talk a little bit about, you know, we're adding jobs, it seems every month, um, but continue to see a smaller workforce than pre-pandemic. I'm wondering if you can talk about that mismatch a little bit and whether that's a concern even as we continue to see this um, growth in the number of jobs and in wages. Uh, yeah, I can start on that. And Angelina, if you'd like to add to it. I mean, the workforce shortage certainly continues to be a challenge. And that is true across a wide range of sectors. If we look at macro data, and it's also true just anecdotally in my travels around the state, then I think uh, many others can can validate that. Um, we are pleased to see progress in the right direction. Um, and I would note that we have a variety of actions that we're trying to take in state government, both at deed and beyond, to address that to the best of our ability. Now, we're operating inside of demographic conditions in which uh, we're getting older as a state. And so to some level that puts um, uh, pressure on the labor force participation rate. As we're trying to get more and more people into the labor force, as we get older, we have more people reaching that retirement age who are no longer interested in being in the labor force. So it's really important that we emphasize um, youth-oriented programming, for example, as well as mid-career folks to steer them into um, great opportunities in Minnesota, and in particular, to do it kind of strategically focusing on sectors where there's great demand, family sustaining wages, and kind of a high ripple effect to other sectors as well. So that's how we've gone about it with programs like the Drive for Five, which is our program uh, that the governor announced grants from uh, just in the last month or two. We're looking forward next to our targeted populations workforce program uh, to help provide opportunities via grantee partners for folks that have been overlooked. Uh, in the past and whose talents haven't been fully tapped, especially persons of color. Um, and then I also want to add to this somewhat long answer that DEED, of course, has a lot of resources in this space, but so do several of our sister agencies, uh, thinking of places like uh, MDE, Department of Education, uh, Department of Human Services, et cetera. And one thing that we're also working on is greater coordination across state agencies to make sure that we are maximizing 
uh, the the value that we get out of those programs and the dollars entrusted to us and not being redundant in our uh, use of them. Angelina, anything you'd add there? Yeah, thanks, Commissioner. Um, you hit on the the biggest reason why we're seeing um, a smaller labor force now compared to pre-pandemic, and that's uh, retirements. Um, so when we break down the data, um, looking at like why people aren't in the labor force in Minnesota, the biggest um, kind of trend upwards is the rate of retirement, um, especially since like 2020, 2021. Um, other reasons are actually um, trending in a good direction. So like more um, like schooling could be another reason why people are not in the labor force, but that's actually um, trended down in the last few years, um, you know, with a, a good economy, uh, a tight labor market, more people tend to uh would rather work than than be in school. Um, and then um, disability is another reason that people may not be in the labor force and that's actually uh, improved over the last few years as well, um, which is good news that we are um, um, as an economy, as a state more inclusive and, and empowering um, anyone who wants to work to be able to, to be in the labor force. Um, so yeah, yeah, the biggest driver is really just an aging population and retirements. Thank and you. if I can just add, add on one more bit, uh, which Angelina reminded me of, uh, talking about increasing rates of um, labor force participation by persons with disabilities, that's something we're proud to be partners in as well at DEED, uh, including the fact that we're home to Minnesota State Services for the Blind, uh, as well as Vocational Rehabilitation Services. We have a employer reasonable accommodation fund because oftentimes uh, once employers have a positive experience, uh, employing folks that maybe they hadn't considered before, it can then have a positive ripple effect there. And then also, I know the the your newspaper has covered um, the new efforts by Explore Minnesota for business and for talent with the Star of the North campaign, where we are telling the Minnesota story in a variety of other markets outside of Minnesota to invite people not just to visit here, but also to make their lives here and to join us in the labor force. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other questions? All right. Well, you are welcome to follow up with any additional uh, inquiries that you might have. I'll put uh, Mary's name in the chat. But with that, I'll turn it back to you, Commissioner. Great. Thanks, Lacey. And thanks again, everybody, for joining. I would just recap by saying once again that March was a very strong month on the labor force front with robust job growth and a significant increase in the overall labor force. Next uh, release of employment numbers will be on May 16th, right near the end of the legislative session, right near my birthday as well, I would add. And so look forward to seeing you then and hope you all have a good rest of the day. Thank you. So long.